I'm going to talk about bleed in. So first, I'm going to just tell you what bleed is. It's really, really simple. Don't listen to people who say it's a complicated thing, difficult to understand. But I'm going to show it to you. Okay, here's my LARP. This is what I have in mind. And I have built some characters. They're not yet filled in. So the players, they go to my LARP. This is the players. This one is going to play this character and we have that character and we have that character and we have that character and then we have somebody who wants to play a different character than I thought and we have another character and we have a character. Okay, so now my LARP has some faint traces. I don't know if you can see it but there's like small dots. This is always going to happen because players come to the game with their luggage. And just as there's bleed through the paper, there's going to be bleed in into the game. So I can design for massive bleed in. There's a bigger dot. Okay. So when we play the game, these characters, they put in some of their own into this. Some will go really, 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 really deep. And they'll really, 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 really gonna, you know, have strong emotions connected to what they were doing before and their real life. And when they get out, they will have bleed. This is bleed. Okay, so designing for bleed in. It's bringing me to the game, getting people to bring themselves to the game. And this is also me, but in a, um, as a character, uh, Charlie who is a very nice person, I think. Not everybody thinks that. But it's, it's quite handy, actually, to be able to be Charlie. Charlie is a character in a game called Panopticorp. And actually, some days when I go to work and I just can't be bothered, I go to work as Charlie. <laughs> and things get a lot easier, because I can just go, give me that paper, uh, I'll need it before noon. And amazingly, people do that. Um, what is the narrative me? I mean, it's not like there's a clear-cut distinction between me and any of my characters. Anyone who says so is either delusional or sarcastic. So I'm constantly telling a story about me right now. At the forefront of that story is the fact that I'm an expert in a school with international students. That's one story of me. I could also tell you a story about a parent with kids in different other places doing fun things. A poor mother who is working instead of spending vacation time with her family. Or I could tell you the story about a person who is a political activist trying to convey the revolution of activism. All of those could be true stories, but I choose the narrative of me. So all of these narratives can also be brought in to uh, play when I play a character. In a way, you did that yesterday in the impro game. You took your 
uncertainty of being in a new situation with new people and you transform that into the awkwardness of a middle school disco. That was a clear design choice from the organizers. Now sometimes players do this on their own accord. And what we're talking about here is the methods for you as game designers to make that possible. So you will need a little bit information about your players or you will have to design a tool like I talked about in Melanie Melhav where we workshopped and allowed players to take in things. In Couple, the game that Oliver talked about, uh, it was an optional sharing circle where you could tell your co-players of some time in, the, in your history where you had been betrayed. And then that real story was used in the game to trigger you and push your buttons to make you feel things. So it can be viewed as a shortcut. There has been a game called Fat Man Down in which the fattest people in the room at that time got to play the fat man. And it was a game about bullying. Now this had a lot of different effects also because quite a few of the players who did play the fat man in this game had actually been bullied for their size. And I'm not necessarily sure this was a good thing. And of course, if you pull it all the way, it's very close to psychodrama. Psychodrama is where I take up a trauma that I've had and we sort of recreate it so I can enter it in different ways and see different perspectives. This is not LARP. We are not therapists, most of us. And even if we were, I'm not sure I think it would be ethical to do that kind of thing. And this is coming from me who just said I recreated people's genders. Anyway. <laughs> and also we have to think about whose story it is. If I want to tell a story about something, but I invite the players to do a lot of bleed in, chances that my story will actually be told, like not my story, but my, my story of my game, becomes radically decreased. This is a picture from Panoptico, the game where I play Charlie. Um, and what we're talking about is the difference, I mean the very concrete difference between character on one hand and the player on the other hand, and how we communicate between these two vessels. Because they are communicating vessels, just like the pieces of paper I had, they are communicating in some way. They're not separate. So, of course we can ask the rhetorical question, are they really distinguishable? Is it really even different sheets of paper or is it just that it's different lighting? Yeah, I think so. I think we managed to create completely different people in games. But in some games, especially competitive games, it can, if designed for that, which can be a conscious choice to do it or it's just an accident, it can give you competitive, unfair advantages. So in Panopticorp, which was a game about an ad bureau, and a very competitive game, there was actually a difference between players who are creative as players and players who just played creative people. It made a difference in the game. In other games, of course, uh, I can play Conan the Barbarian. Have you, do you know who Conan the Barbarian is? Is that a yeah, yeah. cultural reference that will do? It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, of course I could play Conan the Barbarian. It's not, it would go quite low on the plausibility thing. I could probably amp myself with scenography. Uh, but given the right in-game tools, I could be the best swords master you've ever seen, or the biggest barbarian, or super strong. But if we design it differently, I wouldn't be able to play that because I'm not that strong as a player. So also it's a lot of talk about that this is before the game, like what I bring into the game. But we also have to acknowledge that people experience feelings during the game. 
and that some of these feelings are connected to things that is happening in our real life. So for instance, if I, my character is abandoned in the game and I have had a, a breakup quite recently, maybe I'll, that will remind me of something. So that's something you could, you could also design and, and work with. And of course, designing for a lot of bleed-in will take out one of the major reasons, I would say that a lot of people, why they LARP is because of escapism. They want to escape. They want to be Conan the Barbarian or uh, this high-profile ad bureau guru. And the more we go into that, the less differentiation we have. Because the fate of Max is that the character is completely different from me. It's a completely different person. And of course it's arguable if the opposite is really different or it's just the same and it's actually a circle and not a line. But leaving that behind, the opposite, playing something else can heighten the role play experience. It can be total escapism and maybe I'll get a completely different view or perspective and that's great. And of course, it, it, there's, there will probably be less confusion between the real world. It's very, very, very difficult for me if I have LARPed in, as a soldier in a medieval war to believe I'm a soldier in a medieval war once I get to the streets of Stockholm. Too different can make it very difficult for players to engage. I mean, if I were an orc, hmm, how would that feel? and so on. It can be difficult. And also total differentiation is an illusion, I claim. Uh, close to home, the players will always be a more complete character than any character you can write. The workshopping of bringing a player in as a character is a 360 workshop like you wouldn't believe it. You can never achieve that kind of workshopping. But is it LARP? Mm, I'm not sure. It depends. Probably not. And also, can we deal with a positive out outcome? Are we really prepared to, to take in every character and deal with the outcome? And is that responsibility we actually bring on as organizers? This position also raises a lot of difficult questions. So I would say you should be conscious of bleed, both bleed in and bleed out, which I haven't really talked about now. Uh, we should be conscious about it because it's one entry point for players to relate to the character. We should also use agreed frame of reference. And one way of doing that is like when I asked you if a reference to Conan the Barbarian makes sense. So if we, we have a framework, which is actually from outside in the real world, we can bring that in, but only if we agree, otherwise it's meaningless. And also, it can be a guide to navigate the story and get some more oomph in there. Like heightening people's own experience. And of course, players will do this filling in the gaps. If I just tell you you're a barbarian, maybe you will fill in that gap with a picture of Conan. And you will do that automatically. And that will also be a form of bleed-in. So the less information you give your characters, like yesterday in the impro thing, the more you will bring with you from your previous experiences. Although not all of those experiences have to be lived by you. They can also be cultural. Thank you.